Forward TV. The world is thinking. One of the great companies here in California is a company called Google. It's doing pretty well. And they've laid out a plan to retire all the coal plants by 2030. They have laid out the mix of wind and but solar and storage and efficiency. And we, the notion that we actually have to have increasing demand, uh, that's Bruce, not based I, on science. Who can, who can argue with that uh, by 2030? What are you going to do between now and 2030? We don't make the but problem well, worse you've by gotta have, You've got to have an answer between now and then. You can't continue to contribute to it. What so they, you, phase you, you phase them all out. You phase them out over the next year. Okay, but you have to phase Google? something in. That's right. Well, you know, well, what, well, well, well we, talk about me, wind, I, I, we talk about wind and solar and geothermal, you're talking about less than 1% of the energy. I don't today. know what, what it is today, which is precisely the point. If you're in that market, the coal industry is taking up half the market share. It's the oldest, most antiquated, and their lobbyists on DC, in D.C. are blocking our investments in clean energy and new jobs today. That's not true at all. Wind, says Dr. Chu, can get to 20% of our energy mix. Today it's at 1%. What's stopping it is the coal industry blocking the renewable energy right. standard in Congress. All right. the no, that's, that's, that's not let me be clear about He's that. He's wrong. He's wrong. Yeah. He's absolutely wrong. That, as that's popular how, a position as that is, that's flatly untrue. Flatly wrong. Right <laughs> now the government subsidizes something between 2.5 cents and 4.5 cents any given year the production and construction of wind farms. Wind is competitive in some markets today, and that is a massive Herculean forward effort, which our country and other countries have done, but they have done through this through massive government support and subsidy, and it still represents a fairly small fraction of generation. And the reason why, I believe, is that we're still learning about these things. And, you and don't just turn the dime. We, There's and a the lot. other reason Wind is was the, the largest but, but, generation but, source last year. But, 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 the but other, the, excuse me, uh, just one last point. Three and a half billion dollars, three point four billion dollars are in the stimulus package for fossil energy. Sixteen point six billion dollars are in the stimulus package for renewables. I think it's important that we stop eating our siblings around this. We're gonna need all of these carbon free jewels. But, so We're gonna need every single one. And I do not see today that people are th rushing to build coal plants because they don't want to build renewables. I see rather the opposite these days. And yet People still have demand for electricity in this country and others. And, and, and wind and solar are used for a totally different kind of electricity in this country. We really have baseload power, sources that produce electricity on demand, and we have intermittent power resources. Okay, wait, I want to interrupt. And I'll tell you, I mean, this is an important story Very because important. there are people who really wrong. love, it is true. John Wellinghoff, head of FERC, last Sunday in the New York Times said, the notion that we can't replace coal plants with wind and solar is flatly wrong. This notion well, of baseload is wrong. That's right. Well, let me tell you this much. I know Basin Electric, a rural electric cooperative in North Dakota. Back three, four months ago, back in January, they had a uh, cold snap in North Dakota. It was 46 degrees below zero. They've made a huge investment in a wind farm up there, 120 megawatts of wind, and they're very proud of it. 46 below zero, they were generating electricity with everything they had just to meet customer demand. And unfortunately, the wind wasn't blowing. So this idea that we are going to take and replace traditional baseload sources with intermittent power resources is just not going to work. I mean, the thing I like best about my job is I don't have to run the negative campaign about other energy resources. I, we believe that we're going to need all of our available energy resources. But the bar that some people want to set for what is clean coal, we could come out and run the same campaign about wind. There's no such thing as reliable wind. It will only Something produce else, electricity when the wind is blowing. And so this reality is we are going to need all of these things working in tandem. And I want to take on, since I'm in the backyard of Google, why did Google build their big facility in Council Bluffs, Iowa? They built it, and they said that they built it there because it had the cheapest electricity available to them. And guess where they get their electricity from in Council Bluffs, Iowa? From coal. And so from that standpoint, I really salute what Google's doing. Dan Riker works there. Dan's a former colleague of mine at the Department of Energy. They have a 10-year program where they're going to invest $100 million of their own money to make wind energy as cheap as coal. And I'm happy about that because I think low-cost electricity is important. But at the end of the day, we're not talking about trading apples and oranges because it's intermittent power versus baseload power. It's simply not true. 